Do you ever get headaches when you dip your head under at like 33 degrees? People report to me that they That's do. happened to me once. Yeah. Like I had a headache for like a week. So there's um, two things about headaches in the cold. Headaches can be associated with metabolic dysfunction. Mm. So somebody getting migraines might start a cold plunge practice, improve perfusion in the brain, improve their metabolism and find that it helps their headaches. But somebody else getting into the cold might force blood up into the brain, increase the pressure up there and make their headaches worse. There's a trend of people just dipping their face in the water because mm -hmm. You know, somebody says, oh, you get all the benefits of cold plunge. And that's a bunch of nonsense. You will get the dive reflex, which is one of the benefits of cold plunge. Yeah. But you also might get the headache. I don't recommend ice baths for headaches. I have a different recommendation for that. I brought it down. I'm glad you asked because uh, I want to show you what's called mm -hmm. the migraine lamp. Migraine? It's green light therapy for headaches. So I'm going to shine this self on, I'm gonna shine this on my eyes because wow. you use it like this. If you're in a therapeutic setting, mm -hmm. you would set it on like a little cell phone stand, you'd put it in front of you, you'd close your eyes and you would let the green light come through your closed eyelids. Nobody knows why this works, but it works. I was on Mark Bell's podcast and his producer, Andrew, He's had migraines ever since he was a kid. And so he asked me about it. The invention was kind of accidental because I had a girlfriend with migraine headaches and I was looking at red light and UV and phototherapy. And I think Google must have known that I was doing this library search. And, you know, it's, hey, maybe you're going to like this one or something because they watch my every move, huh, you know? That's odd. Yeah, right? Um, and it was about green light and photophobia for people who suffer from migraines. When you have a migraine, most migraineurs want total darkness because the light will make their headache mm -hmm. worse. So they shut themselves in a closet or in a dark bedroom or something, it's terrible. But at Harvard, they tested all the wavelengths of light and they found that green had a pain relieving or analgesic effect. University of Arizona picks this up and they start making devices with just green LEDs in them for migraineurs to use. And they get a sig significant reduction in the frequency and severity of migraine headaches among those people who used green light phototherapy. The mechanisms remain a mystery, but I'm reading about this and I'm like, oh, I go to a friend of mine, you know, this is just a red light box mm -hmm. and I say, could you make this, you know, with green LEDs in it instead? And I gave him the wavelengths that I wanted. And sure enough, the prototype came from his manufacturer. Wow. And he turned it on and he was like, this is terrible. <sighs> you know, it's going to give me a headache. And right. he calls me up and he says, Tom, we can't market this. I said, well, I have to see it. I got to, you know, maybe I'll figure something out. Um I drive out there with this woman that I'm dating at the time. She gets headaches all the time and I'm turning this on and I'm agreeing with my buddy and I'm like, ah, oh, it's awful. She says, let me see that. And she takes it out of my hand. Mm -hmm. She puts it right up against her face. She closes her eyes and she says, this feels really good. So I'm like, I think we just invented the world's most powerful green therapy device for pain relief. Do you it. have any speculation to why it could help headaches? Can I do. I, can I see it? I'm, I'm going to get there. Yeah. Um, I sent one to Andrew from Mark Bell's podcast just yeah. to try it out. He said it works great. Reduces his need for medication. He tried it with his wife. And his wife is not the same kind of chronic migraineer that he is. Sorry, I hit the wrong button on How you. do I turn it on? Uh, there's a power button. And then there's controls for all the different wavelengths that go with it. And a timer. And I, I might have. Um, Do we break it? Yeah, probably. Oh, there we uh, go. I put it on like no. I put it on the the zero dimness setting. Okay. So now you're back up to max. Wow. Yeah. Andrew says it's fantastic. Um, other people tell me the she, same thing. Is it thing. okay to look at it or no? There's no harms that I've noticed okay. from looking at it. Um, but the way that it has worked best is through closed eyelids. It you is, can just charge it with like a normal uh, iPhone charger. USB charger. Yep. Wow. So I have a clinician in Utah who uses this with his patients. He sends me case studies. Post-concussion headaches, sinus headaches, stress headaches, migraine headaches, 
all of these relieved by green phototherapy. And you were saying, well, could we make a guess at how it works? Um, the, the PhDs doing this research, they're like neurologists. I'm an engineer. I make machines. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how the optic nerve or the brain works. But I understand how forest bathing works. In Japan, they how have what? forest bathing. Okay. So it, it's an expression that it, it translates this Japanese word that uh, I forget what it is. But the, the English interpretation of this Japanese practice is you go into the forest maybe four or five hours a week and you bathe in the forest. Metaphorically, you don't get wet. But you're, you're allowing the air and the light environment of the forest to be your environment. Taking in the forest atmosphere there or you forest go. bathing describes the mindful practice of immersing one's senses in a natural environment. To that makes us so much sense. Shinrin yoku, I guess, is the term that uh, Google is telling us. Now, you probably like get the point. Yeah, you go out mm -hmm. in nature, you're gonna yeah. feel better. Right. Everyone's had this experience. Yeah. Clinical trials show that you don't just feel better, you heal faster, your mood improves, your health improves in every dimension when you go out into the forest. Not only that, but if you just paint a mural of a forest on the wall of a dentist office, the patients will report lower pain readings. Really? You, exactly. If you give a hospital patient a window and outside their window is like a cityscape, and it's a little bit of benefit, but if you have trees outside their window, it will reduce their hospital stays because they will heal faster. So there's something about the green. Well, in the forest, you know, there's all kinds of clean air and wonderful things, but the light environment is unique. Every for every shady forest throughout the world. And people have brought spectrophotometers and measured this, dominated by two wavelengths of light. Green, that makes sense. You know, the leaves are all green. Mm. And near infrared. And that part doesn't really make a lot of sense. But it turns out that the trees are emitting two wavelengths of light that they can't really use. Right. Green and near infrared. One of them is visible to us and one of them is invisible. Now, if you live in Phoenix, Arizona, like I do, you don't get green. There's no green. A palm tree is not a shady forest. So you are removed from that forest bathing environment. You got to drive two hours up to Payson or Flagstaff or something like that if you want to find the forest in Arizona. It's beautiful up there, but I don't have all day for this. The theory is that we can bring the green light of the forest, which I am in deficit of because I live in Phoenix. We can bring it into my home. We can bring it into my eyes. And then we can give me one of the benefits of forest bathing, that is the light environment of the forest in my apartment, you know, in a high rise in Phoenix. Wow. That doesn't say how or why it works, but that is kind of a naturalistic explanation for us to investigate. That's fascinating. Man. It sure is. Ah! <laughs>